More now on this battle over illegal immigrants seeking asylum. Let's bring in the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Texas, John Bash, who was at the border with the president this week. Uh, it's great to have you with us, John. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Shannon, for having me. Okay, I want to play something that former DHS Secretary Janet Napolitano said this week about the detention of people who come over the border and what happens next. Here's what she said. We need to get away from this concept that everybody has to be detained. Uh, we can release people uh, into the country. Uh, they can be required to wear an ankle bracelet. They can be required to report back periodically uh, until such time as they get a return court date. Okay, so John, how does this work with asylum? Because we know the courts are so backlogged. There are a lot of people who may not get a hearing on asylum, for example, until 2021. So what's wrong with releasing them in the meantime? That's right, Shannon. This is, there is an 800,000 case immigration backlog. People wait in this country for years. Let me give you the 30,000 foot view of what's wrong with our immigration system right now. It's not about legitimate people, people with legitimate asylum claims. Of all the people that show up at the border and make an asylum claim, only some 13% actually get that claim granted at the end of the day. The problem with the system is that if you show up at the border, make an asylum claim, you're very likely to get into the country and to be able to live and work here for years before your immigration hearing, even though you're not the kind of person that Congress has said can come into this country um, for asylum. And you mentioned, I think, at the top of the broadcast, the recent Ninth Circuit order. Mm -hmm. What that policy does is that was that the Ninth Circuit put back in place is try to end that incentive. It says if you're going to file an asylum claim, fine, but you have to wait outside the country while we adjudicate the claim. And, and just, just to make the really important point, this is not only bad because it allows people into the country that Congress has not authorized into the country, but it also hurts legitimate asylum claimants because they have to wait years for the certainty of having their asylum claim granted while 800,000 other people who don't have valid claims get their hearing first. It doesn't work well for legitimate asylum claimants, and it doesn't work well for our country. And well, we've seen so much of what the president has done, or the administration has tried to do uh, on the issue of immigration, get caught up in the courts. Um, and the fact that a single federal judge can issue what's called a nationwide injunction, shutting down an entire policy while the actual merits of the case are proceeding, there are a lot of folks who are raising concerns about that. Um, in an opinion piece in The Daily Caller by former um, GOP Congressman Bob Barr, he writes, um, fueled not only by the judiciary branch's longstanding lust for power, but now by the left's hatred for Donald Trump, judicial public policy activism threatens to engulf both the legislative and executive branches of our government. I mean, for any president, Republican or Democrat, um, how concerned are you about them trying to effectuate policies that a single federal judge, and there are hundreds of them, uh, can actually stop for potentially years at a time? Well, well, this has been a growing problem over the years, and it affected the Obama administration, too. Um, you know, I was a constitutional lawyer before I took my current post. I argued Supreme Court cases for DOJ. And the way injunctions are supposed to work is you're supposed to grant relief to the party in front of you. You're not supposed to grant relief to any number of thousands of people who are not in front of you. So when a single district judge grants relief nationwide, he, he or she is essentially deciding a bunch of cases that aren't presented, namely cases of plaintiffs that aren't in front of them. Um, that also really hampers the development of the law. The Supreme Court tends to wait for cases um, after they've what's called percolated in the lower courts. A lot of judges have weighed in. But when one judge takes it upon himself or herself to issue an injunction nationwide, it, it halts that process and it doesn't allow the Supreme Court to get the views of numerous courts before the case gets up to them. So it's a, it is definitely a big problem and a lot of judges have noted it recently as well. Yeah. I mean, a single federal judge has a lot of power in scenarios like this. All right, a U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Texas, uh, John Bash, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me.